had some awesome winners. Seth and Briley won personal DoorDash from Rebecca and I. Yay! It's so exciting. And I also want to remind you guys to keep your eye out for Flat Jesus. Where's Flat Jesus today? I don't know about your house, but in my house, everybody has found Flat Jesus pretty quick. And I thought we've been hiding him really well. I know. I thought we have too. But everybody's been finding him really quick in my house. Maybe it's our camera guy. Maybe he's like zooming in too much for them. Are you giving it away, camera guy? Maybe. <laughs> so, we have been talking about superheroes. I want to know. In the comments of this video, tell me who your favorite superhero superhero is, and why. I have a favorite. Um, I know I've said this before in one of the videos, but I'm not really like big into superheroes. I don't know a lot. I couldn't tell you what. I guess there's groups. I didn't know there were groups, so there are groups. But I guess there is. There is. So. Tell me what your super, or who, not what, who, maybe it's a what, kind of, they're kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Tell me who your favorite superhero is and why in the comments. That'll give you an entry into our box. And I'll tell you, my favorite, and I know I've said it before, is Wolverine. He is my favorite. Why? I just like him. He's like the defender of all good, I feel like. Yeah. I like Wolverine. He's been through so much in his life. He's had loss and he's had to go through so much change, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I just like him as a superhero. I like Wolverine. And too. he fights for good. He does. So he fights for I like him. him. Anyway, tell me who your favorite is and tell me why. I want to know. We want to know. We want to know. So, everyone, everyone's hero has strengths and weaknesses. Let's talk about some of this. How about Superman? Superman, his strength is that he's bulletproof. That would kind of be cool. Like, it would be awesome right now with the whole coronavirus going on that that would be what you're bulletproof from. Yeah. Like Wouldn't a it? shield of anti-corona. Yeah. But his weakness, he had a weakness. Even though he could take a bullet, something as simple as a rock that lights up green Kill, could kill him or take his strengths away like if he didn't wasn't exposed too long they just weakened him mm -hmm. but they could if he was exposed long enough kill him yeah how about Batman Batman his strengths are like that he has awesome gadgets and lots of money so that he can supply all those gadgets and have his mansion and the awesome bat cave and the awesome bat gear so, but his weakness, sad but true, is that he's human. Yeah. Which, from my point of view, Batman is not one of my favorites. I can be honest. He is, I love Batman. He is not. Because from my perspective, like, without his gadgets and his money, he wouldn't be a superhero. He would just be human. He would be like you and I. Yeah. So, yes, because he has the money and because he has all these gadgets because of his money... He's a superhero, so he's not like one of my favorites. Um, kind of goes up there, like with um, Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah, because you know he's smart and he has money, so he can have the gadgets to have those. Granted, he does have to go through something where he has this thing that kind of makes him more superheroish. But anyway, that's my take on Batman. Yeah. Not one of my faves because I don't feel like he's a an, an supernatural. Yeah. Superhero, maybe. Bruce um, Wayne. Yeah. He's human. Yes. So, here's one. What about Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman. She's pretty awesome. She is as strong as Earth. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> That's really Could you impressive. imagine holding up the Earth like, like it was nothing? Like you're holding right. up a twig or something? Right. Like, oh. However, she has a weakness. And it's that if her bracelets... You guys ever watched those of you that created your superhero yeah. um, costumes last week? You saw that you had the little wrist cuffs, the wrist cuffs, and if hers are tied together, um, she loses her strength and her powers. Um, now, kind of a catch twenty twenty because 
if she can hold up the earth because of her strength, not too many people are going to be able to get close enough to tie up her wrist muscles, right? That's true. So, <clears throat> anyway, tell me who your superheroes are, what, they're, what your favorite is. Maybe tell me which one you don't like. I didn't realize I didn't like one until we started talking about it. <laughs> um, but tell me who they are. It's kind of a fun And why. Thing. And why, yeah. It's kind of fun just to um, talk about our superheroes that aren't really, they don't even, well, whatever. Anyway, but we are going to talk about one superhero that really does exist. And for you at home, you're going to go to John chapter 19, verse 17 through 27. Again, we don't read those during the lesson. Um, we want to challenge you at home to get with your family, your mom, your dad, your siblings. Do a Bible war. Read through that and get a more understanding for yourself. Maybe there's something that we're talking about that you don't understand. It's going to be in there and your parents or your siblings can help you figure out the answers to that. And if they can't, message us. We would love to help you figure out more about the lesson. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, today, as we continue our Jesus League series, we're going to talk about one, we all know, the greatest superhero is Jesus. Jesus. Yes. He's like the commander. Yeah, he's the greatest. He's the leader of all superheroes. Um, but the greatest power that Jesus had, yes, he has powers, but the greatest one is love. It's true. It really is. I think that maybe the greatest power ever could be love. It could be. Love conquers so much. <clears throat> the thing about Jesus' love is that he loved everyone. He didn't have any favorites. Still doesn't have any favorites. It doesn't matter what race you are, what creed you are, what... Um, church you go to, <laughs> yeah. he don't care. He loves people for who they are and where they're at. That's extreme love, like love to the fullest. No judgment behind anything, just loving people. That's what Jesus did. That was his superpower. So some of you might be going, why do they have blankets on their table this week? Well, because they're special. And they were, this one particularly, I don't know if you can see it, this one is, reminds me of love. And not just love like today, but it goes back generations. My blanket was made by my great grandma. That's awesome. And she gave it to my grandma. That's pretty incredible. Who gave it to my mom, who now has given it to me. So when I see this blanket, I think about and when I wrap up in it, it's like I can feel her love. Yeah. Because there was so much love that went into making it and the, the importance of passing it along. There's just love in my blankie. And I love wrapping up in it and just feeling those that strong lineage of women in my family that yeah. cared so much about each other. Uh, what This one's Cassandra's. Why is yours so special? This is special. It's actually uh, Gavin's baby blanket. And... It was made, I don't know if you can see down here, but it says made with love. And he's had it since uh, before he was born. And it's been through a lot. And it's still his favorite blanket and comforts him. So do you have a favorite blanket that reminds you or makes you just feel safe and secure because you know the person that gave it to you or made it loves you so much? Maybe yours isn't a blanket. Maybe yours is a stuffed animal. Yeah. Let us know. Take a picture of yourself with either your blankie or your stuffed animal or the one thing that makes you know that somebody loves you so very much. Take a picture and put it in the comments. We want to see it. But this week's hero showed love like no other human besides Jesus. He was the one that was so overwhelmed by Jesus' love that he was known as the, what was the name? John the Beloved. I was going to say it backwards, and I knew it was, I would say Beloved of John, but that's not right. It's John the Beloved. What? 
he was one of Jesus's very, very closest friends. He was. Very closest friends. He was one of the only disciples, one of the only ones that actually went to the cross when Jesus went to die for us. Wow, that's pretty one incredible. Of, all the women around Jesus were there, his mom, Mary, all the other women had gone, but he was the only disciple, only male disciple that went to be by Mary. Because his love for God was so strong that he knew that he needed to exude that love that he had for the other people around. So incredible to think about how John just loved and loved and loved. It is incredible. Even with everything he had going on. The, one of the things that, that John teaches us is that we are loved and that... He teaches us that we are loved, but he shows us that when we love God, we're ultimately loving others. Yes, that's good. That sounds so simple. Great. Love God, and you're showing that you love others by loving God. Now, Jesus, he proved his love. Yeah. I bet a lot of you are like, yeah, I know how he proved his love. Some of you might not. But Jesus proved his love by a huge action. Yeah, huge action. One that we've talked about before, and that yes. was that he went and died on the cross for us. Yeah, for us. He laid down his life because he loved us so much. Now, I know we've talked about this before, that I don't know that I would be so willing to go and die for everybody in the world. Right. And the crazy thing about Jesus is that he would have done it just for you. Yeah. If true. you were the only person in the world, he loves you enough that he would have gone and died just for you. How many of you have ever heard the saying, actions speak louder than words? I have. I've said it a lot. Yeah, me too. How many of you feel it? You know. Somebody, I know. it's really easy to say, I love you. I love you too. But when you take your time to do something, to go out of your way, to let that person know that you love them, it speaks so much more to that person's heart. It does. Than just saying, I love you. I am big on not saying I love you like 40,000 times. Yeah. Because for me, actions speak louder than words. I Don't get me wrong. I say it and I want to hear it. But when you're saying it, I want to know that it's genuine. I want to know that it's true and that it's not just three words flying off the tip of your tongue because they're easy to say, but it is much harder to follow through with what you're saying. That's so true. when you're saying you love somebody, you're saying, I am going to go above and beyond to care for you, to be a friend to you, um, to meet your needs when I can. You're saying I'm available yeah. to you. Just like Jesus did when he died on the cross. He was saying, I care about you. I'm willing to go to the very depths to show that I love you. So, <clears throat> Jesus is counting on us. He wants us to show his love. How, how, do, how, what? how do we show God's love? We're not God and we're not going to go die on a cross. For everybody, so how do, how do we show his love? Uh, just like how you said, I think it's through our actions, um, through the fruits of the spirit, displaying mm -hmm. love, joy, yeah. peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self gentleness and self control. You know, those are ways that we put our words to actions when we're kind, when we help each other out, mm -hmm. when we make time for one another, when we invest in having a relationship yeah. or calling to check on somebody. Yeah. Those are ways that we're showing others that we care or we love them. Yeah, I would say that before uh, pre-quarantine, it was easier to show people you love them. I agree. Because um, you could have that immediate contact with them you could go in their homes. You could get together and just be with one another. Um, you could give them a great big hug. That's an awesome. My son Gabriel, 
Seriously, it gives the best hugs. I have never met somebody that can give a better hug. He is such an incredible hugger. And That's a gift. It's a, it's a true gift because you can feel his love by his hug. That a couple weeks ago, um, I was just really struggling with with quarantine and being kind of secluded from people. And um, he walked by because as much as he can give a great hug, he's also very aware of noticing when somebody needs a hug. And he just came up and he just hugged me. And it was like all those feelings that I was struggling with kind of melted away. That's awesome. It's like uh, his <clears throat> love for God is shown through him mm -hmm. and his hugs. Yeah. And so maybe it may helped you feel also like you were maybe a little bit closer to the Father then. Or, yeah. you know, you're getting your need met. Yeah. So with everything that's going on around us, um, it can be more difficult to really show people that you love them. And let's be honest, right now, uh, by picking up your phone and just calling somebody and saying, hey, I was thinking about you and saying I love you means more now than what it probably did pre-quarantine. Just hearing somebody's voice and knowing that they're thinking about you and that they care about you. Um, I know for me, and as much as I was doing it for others, it helped me, was we got in the car one night and we went around and just kind of, we left little things on people's doorsteps and just to say, we're thinking about you. We know we're all separated, but we love you. We're here, you know, just something little. So during this time, it might be harder to connect, but maybe it, for you, some of you are old enough, maybe you notice you have an elderly neighbor um, and it's time to mow lawns. Maybe you show them your love by just not asking for payment, but just going and mowing their lawn for them. Maybe you know um, a neighbor that has difficulty taking their trash to the end of the um, road for a pickup and you go and do it. Not to be seen, not to be, hey, look at me, but just to say, I love you, I see you, and I care about you. Yeah, and it's, uh, in doing that, you're blessing them, mm -hmm. but you really don't even, may not even know or may never even know how much just those simple things mean to people. Like, Gabriel knew that you needed yeah. the hug, but yeah. he may not have known how deeply it, right. it, that meant to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know, like, Remnant Church, one of the things that we've been doing is handing out lunches. Yeah. And on Fridays, we hand out a little bit more. We don't know the depth of everybody that comes through those lines, and we don't know the need and how deep that need goes, but we do know we're extending love. That's right. No matter how deep the need is, we're extending love. So this week, I want you to ask, you're like, well, how do I know how to love somebody? The best way is to ask God to give you a heart that's loving. Yeah. Maybe it's just within your home. We've all been quarantined to our homes, and I'll be honest, like my kids, that's like putting two animals that don't, yeah, in a in a cage for an extended amount of time and expecting them to get along. Right. And that's what we've done with our families. Um, <clears throat> my kids have done really well, but as time goes on, you start getting fidgety and you want to do things. And so maybe you extending love is not outside of your home, but inside your home. Right. Maybe it's about um, helping a sister or a brother. Maybe it's about not back talking your mom and dad. That's a good one. Maybe because you're extending love to them. Just because they're your parents doesn't mean they don't need love. Maybe Absolutely. it's about saying, you know what? Daddy or mommy has been working very hard at whatever they do. Maybe you have a parent that's an essential worker and they're coming home and they're exhausted from being on the front lines. And they come home and you have done the dishes and done laundry and, you know, just helped out. That's there are ways of showing that you love your family. Yeah. And so maybe if you're struggling in your home to get along with people, maybe you need to take a look inside and say, I'm struggling because I'm not loving people. And no matter if they're your family or not, they're still people and people still need to be loved, including Absolutely. your brothers and your sisters, no matter how annoying you think they are. That's right. <laughs> they need love. They so do. we all need love. So ask God to give you a heart that is loving. And maybe, not maybe, 
If you ask God to give you a heart that is loving, he is going to help you see people the way that he sees them, which will make it much easier to love them. And it's an incredible gift that he is willing to give freely if we just ask. Yeah. The other thing I want you to do is to ask Jesus to give you eyes to see people who need Jesus. And not just need him, but need his love. I and love that. And again, go back to thinking about um, people who need Jesus and the fact that we can't and they need love. You have to start thinking outside the box right now during quarantine of how you're going to show people who Jesus' love is and what it is and how it can just, just like our blankies, just wrap around us and make us feel so safe and so secure. Of any time of our lives, now is the most important time with everything going on that we want to feel safe and we want to feel secure. And have hope. And we don't have, I mean, if I had a blanket to give everybody in the world and say, this feels like Jesus' love, just wrap it around and you're going to feel it and you're going to feel so cozy and so safe and so secure, I would do it. Right. But I don't. But what I do have are my actions. Yeah. I can tell everybody or help anybody to show Jesus' love to them. That's right. So ask, but when you're doing it, when you're asking Jesus to give you um, eyes to see people who need Jesus and who need Jesus' love, ask that he gives you the courage to take action to show that love. That's good. Because it does take action to show God's love, but sometimes we need the courage to do it, to step out of our comfort zone and say, this isn't something I would normally do, but I'm going to do it because I want everybody to feel as safe and secure and loved as I do because Jesus loved me. That's good. So, love people. Yeah. This week's lesson, all about love. I oh. love it. <laughs> she loves <has> it. <laughs> Cuddle up in your whoopee. That's what we call them. Do you have a name for your blankies? Just blankies. Uh, see, they, we're, they're whoopies. Pastor Josh, I think I've talked about him every week. Maybe we should have him come do a video with us sometime. That would be fun. But he, he's always called it a whoopee, and so ours are whoopies. <laughs> I like do it. Do you have a name for your blankies? Tell us about it. So this week's memory verse, I'm telling you, most of you are going to know it. So I better see my video comments of this video flooded. It is John 3.16. Do you know it? Do you know it? Do you know it? Do you know it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's all I'm going to ask of you. God so loved the world. It doesn't say that God so loved the world except for That's right. those of you that live on the south side. Nope, that's not what it says. It doesn't say for God so loved the world, but he doesn't love those that make poor choices. Make poor choices. Good. Good call. He doesn't say that. Nope. John 3.16, one of the most known verses in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's that simple. All that was his gift. That was his action of love. Yeah. That's, that's giving his life. That's right. So, this you, week. Oh, it's so sad. It's our last week of our boxes. It it's is. sad and it's exciting all at the same time because it's exciting. It's the last week of our boxes, but that also means that we are getting closer to opening our doors Yay. and being able to see everybody. Now, listen, it's going to be different when we come back. It is going to be different. There's going to be some structural differences, things you're going to see automatically, and you're like, wow, that's so awesome. Yes. But there's going to be some other things that are going to be different. And later this week, Cassandra and I are going to get together, and we're going to talk about some of those um, expectations that we're, that are going to be set for um, our children's ministry uh, just to keep everybody safe. But it's going to be different, but we're all going to be together. And we're going to get through it. Yep. We're going to we'll come do. together, and it's going to be okay. So I have our bag this week, and we've talked about this, our make it sticks, and ways that we can talk about this lesson in the car, just hanging out at dinner, at bedtime. And, and again, let me reiterate, 
Those of you that didn't sign up to get the box and you're like, what's the box? It's okay. And everything that we do, if you don't have this exact item at home, just make shift it. Do, use what you have to That's do right. the things that we're doing. Everything in here can be substituted for yep. different items that you probably have right around your house. Yep. So our game for this week, or this is our experiment. Yeah. And it's this is a full week. This one is full of stuff. Yes, very full. Cool. It's really exciting. So Raya picked up her bag because this one's hers, and she was like, this is heavy this week. It's because it's so full. It is. So if you see in here, there's Skittles, and we have this little container. And what you do for this experiment is you're going to line the Skittles all the way around the edge of the container, and then you're going to put some water in there, warm water. Warm water. And I'm not going to give away the rest. You'll have to read the instructions. Because it's an experiment. If we tell you the outcome of why we would put Skittles in a little container and then put water in it, and we tell you what's happening, why do the experiment? That's right. So we want to see your pictures of what happens with this experiment. Our it's camera guy will like this. He's been very sad that we haven't been doing experiments. He actually came in today and was like, hey guys, I found an experiment if you want to do it. Yes. Because he loved to do it when we were doing our experiments. So and it's a great experiment. We might have to show you guys. Yeah. Maybe when we come back. Or maybe on a video. Who yeah. knows? We might have our camera guy come and help us do it. I think this is so awesome and it just goes right along with our mm -hmm. lesson today. And I, I had mentioned that one way to show that we love each other is to give everybody a great big hug. We're right now with corona and social distancing, it's not a great idea to go give everybody a great big hug. So instead, we're going to have you make a great big hug and mail it to somebody. You so, have, go ahead. <laughs> you have this huge piece of paper. What you're going to do is lay down on it and have your parent or... It's literally from your, like your arm, you're going to yeah. lay with your arms out. Arms open. And it's just your arms up to your head. Like right. you're giving somebody <laughs> <laughs> like you're giving somebody a great big hug. That's right. So have your brother or sister or parent help you trace the outline of your body, your arms out, just from your armpits up in your head. And then you're gonna decorate it. You're gonna put it in this awesome little envelope that's already pre-stamped. You're gonna address it to somebody you want to share the love with. I want you to them. really, really think about who you think needs a hug. Who do you think could just use an awesome hug from you? And that's who I want you to send this to. Now, those of you that got this uh, bag, every week I'm like, if you choose to do it, do it. If you don't, you don't. This is one of those I really, really, really want you, um, I want to encourage you to do. Um, yes. One, there's stamps on the envelope. <laughs> so use those stamps and mail out your hug. And remember that everybody could use a hug right now. Everybody could. And we want to know if you want to keep it a secret or anonymous and it's just between you and the person you're sending it to that's fine but we want to know that you're sending it maybe take a picture of your hug before you send it or if you're willing to tell us who you're sending it to comment we want to see who's who we're sharing love with from remnant kids and maybe you can put your own little note in there telling them how much you love them and asking them when they get your hug to send a picture of them with your hug getting their hug and this is our game for this week. If you see in here, there's spoons and a cup and more Skittles. Lots of Skittles this week. And what you're going to do is you're going to try and see how many Skittles you can make into the cup. And you're going to be standing like 10 feet away from it. And you're going to be launching them, you know, like... I'm sure most of you guys have probably launched stuff with spoons. I think it's something that you we... just kind of flick them. Yeah. Flick them. Put it on there. Flick it. See how many you can get into the cup in one minute. Our other craft, we told you this is a loaded week. Loaded week. Um, our other craft is we want you as a family. This is not an individual thing. So those of you that got these, um, we want you to create a logo for our Jesus League. Yes. We've done a signal. We've done a signal. We've done our costumes, our yes. outfits, our Jesus League superhero outfits. Yes. Um, love seeing some of those so far. They're so um, awesome. We love now them. we need a logo. We need yes. a Jesus League logo. So create it, send it uh, in our comments so that we can use it for something. And our snack for this week 
comes with a drink because it's a hug. You get hugs and kisses. Hershey kisses and hugs because it's all about love. And we miss you guys so much. We're sending hugs and kisses. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do this one thing real quick here. And first, before we do it, we're going to draw for our winners. Woohoo! Again, uh, you're going to get a special delivery from yours truly. That's right. Us. I know you all want to see us at your doorstep. That's right. Especially because we're bringing videos, right? Right? <laughs> okay. So let's see who our winners are for this week. Okay. I got mine. You take yours. All right. Pick one out. Oops. All right. Are we ready? Ready. Okay. I have Jamin. Jamin will be seeing you sometime today. Yay. And I have Abby. Yay. Yay. Abby will be seeing us sometime today. With some yummy goodies. Mm -hmm. Now last week. Last week. <laughs> We challenged some of you that got the bag with a hot and a sweet. And I told you how much I absolutely Hot and a sour. Oh, yeah. Hot and sour. I would love sweet. <laughs> I told you how much I cannot stand spicy and I cannot stand sour. Mm. And then at the end, for whatever reason, I was like, hey, if we're challenging the kids, maybe we should challenge ourselves next week. That was not smart. I would say that was not a good choice. I but I so. love you all so much. But yeah, I'm willing yeah. to be your entertainment today. It's going to so, get entertaining. Miss Cassandra, if you remember, she was like, I don't like lima beans. That's right. That is That's not a fun. challenge. If I'm I doing like this, beans. you're going to be challenged, Miss Cassandra. I thought of something else I don't like. And it happens to be sitting on this table. Yes. So, Miss Cassandra doesn't like McDonald's. I'm going to move our little blankies here. But let's be real. Just eating a cheeseburger... That's no big deal. Eating some fries, which she kind of likes. I do like the fries. No big deal. Now, one thing that is accurate is that Miss Cassandra has not had soda in eight years. Eight years. So, I don't like soda. Me, being who I am, decided, okay, well, if I'm being challenged, so are you. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of the uh, Happy Meal Challenge. But that's what Miss Cassandra is going to do. So I'm literally going to take some french fries. <laughs> These are small. We might as well do both. Right? <laughs> We're going to take um, a cheeseburger. I don't know if she likes everything on it or not, but I don't care because I have to do hot and spicy. We're going to throw that in there. Let's see what else. Hey, we have a toy. Oh, that's cute. That's a Super Mario toy. We it's, might. It's the Luigi. It's a Super Mario, right? Yeah, it's yes. not the same guy. Like, again, I don't do well with naming people. And to finish off our lovely, lovely smoothie we're making here. Looks like water. Are you sure you didn't get water, Cassandra? Sure. It's Sprite. No, it's, it just popped me in the nose. It's Sprite. We're just going to dump that right in there. You know, there's something that Pastor Jen and Pastor Josh don't like, and that is the word moist. And that is what this just became. <laughs> Love you both. So we're going to, yep. So what's going to happen? You're like, wait a minute. If you're putting it in there, how is she going to eat it? She's going to drink this. Is it this one right here? No, it won't. It seals. Okay. It's sealed. I'm like, ooh, we're going to get to Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Yes. This is amazing. Yeah, you need to go. I love life. Love. Okay, so listen. Oh, my goodness. Let's be really honest here. I, like, I cannot do a lot of textures. I gag so easy. But I'm also one of the most competitive people you'll probably ever meet. So I was at youth camp one year, Miss Cassandra, and drinking a whole Happy Meal challenge would put my team in the lead to win. So you better betcha, you couldn't throw up afterwards. You had to like hold it for so long in your stomach. I literally drank the whole thing and held it without throwing up 
because I wanted my team to win. Because I'm that competitive. That is crazy. We're going to see what happens today with me and being competitive. Can we get a trash can? Are you, uh... I don't think I'll throw it. I don't either. I think you're going to be perfectly fine. I, maybe I'll love it. It's all about love this week. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Our cameraman told her if she loves it, maybe she could go through and ask for her to be blended all the time since she doesn't like McDonald's. <laughs> okay. You think it's good enough? Okay. She thinks it's good enough. Your cameraman might need a trash can. <laughs> I might need a trash can. I'm getting nauseous just looking at it. Okay. Oh my goodness. Let's. You guys want to see it coming out? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's gross. Let's do at least a half a cup. That's half. <laughs> I won't make her do the whole thing. Let me get off the side here so it doesn't drip on anything. <laughs> okay. And everybody said that the um, sour <laughs> the sour candies from last week weren't very sour. Yeah, so we got Sour Patch Kids. So everybody said to do Warheads to make it fair, but I couldn't find any. And they said the second one would be Sour Patch Kids, so I'm doing Sour Patch Kids. And everybody tells me Takis are hot. Um, I tried it with my daughter last week. I think we might add it in this video. But... <laughs> I've seen that video. <laughs> it was great. Which do you want me to do first, Miss Cassandra? Hot or sour? Hot. How many do I have to do? Half. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a lot. <laughs> um, I don't like, know. Five. Oh, that's so, not nice. Are we it's just doing this? That's not nice. You're so much about love. <laughs> this, this is not. Love me. <laughs> Do you people see this? You know these are hot when your fingers from just grabbing them look like this. Okay. So are we doing this? I'm out. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Ready. One. Well, you just have to swallow. <laughs> I have to like chew, and my mouth's gonna get on fire. I mean, I'll eat, I'll eat the rest no. of the bag. No. Okay, we can have the rest of the bag. You might need it after that. All right. Are you ready? ready? Set. Hang on. My mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Ready. Set. Go. Go. Hold on. Oh. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh wait, my nose is running. 